Welcome, welcome, and welcome, and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Uh, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue. I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Every single day. Even at 1.03 p.m. live and in color talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks. Talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks. The three-time, three-time, three-time national champions, South Carolina Gamecocks. That's what we're talking about today. Take a breath. Relax, relate, and release. Woke up this morning. Had no intention of doing a, a, a live show today. No intention of doing a live show today. I wanted to, to just marinate, just, just chill. But the, this, this stuff just always just sometimes just have to jump out at me. And, and, I, and I had to talk about it. So what we're talking about uh, today is ESPNW released their final rankings for the top 100 players in the country. Top 100 players in the country. Okay. All right. So I, I, I always expect movement. I always expect movement. I, and I was a little upset the other day because there wasn't movement, you know, in, in several months. Okay. So, so my, my anticipation of this, um, this uh, final 100 list was already a little low. Why are we a little low? It was a little low because um, I don't, if you follow me, you rock with me, and you've been rocking with me for a long time, and if you're not rocking with me, you're not rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, I'm going to rock with your man, Captain Will. All right, so um, I don't have, like, a huge uh, uh, affection for ESPN. I don't. I don't. Especially for women's basketball. I don't. I don't. I, I, and it, it just don't. A lot of things don't sit right with me. And, 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 and I have to like temper my uh, expectations for certain things concerning ESPN or, e, you know, rankings or awards. I have to, I have to, I have to simmer down because it gets me crap. Give me, give me a little crump. Give me a little crump. And my wife had to smack me in the back of the head and say, boy, relax. It's okay. It's okay. But today is not okay for me. It's not okay for me. Because I can attack this in so many different ways, but I'm attacking it this way. Um, how is it that all three players that the South Carolina Gamecocks have recruited and has committed to has committed to South Carolina, all three of them fall in the rankings? How is that possible? And I look, and I think I'm like, whoa. So Joyce falls from number two to number three. Maddie falls from number 12 to 20 uh, to 14. Adele Tack falls from 26 to 28. Not, not, not huge drops, not a huge drops as well. Any huge drops, but I just don't understand why. I just don't understand why. And, and just just help me understand. I, I just I don't understand. Joyce Edwards has literally did everything she can do to, if not stay at number two, get bumped up to number one. She's won multiple Player of the Year awards. McDonald's All American uh, uh, co MVP, playing in the, the, the Nike Summit, playing just, just, just sensational season, and drops down to number three. I, I have no idea why. I, I've seen up close and personal Jelani Cambridge, and Jelani Cambridge is a sensational basketball player. She's great. She's a great basketball player. But help me, help me understand. If, if Joyce Edwards did nothing this season to drop in the rankings, how did she drop in the rankings? What she did not do, and I understand this to a certain degree. I understand this to a certain degree. Last week, I don't know if y'all saw it. They had the Chipotle Nationals, which 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 shows the the top, uh, uh, supposedly the top ranked teams in the country. Okay, 
and they have this little little tournament and and and, and you know he have a lot of uh, high quality top level players playing in this tournament okay and grace christian was in this tournament um montverde was in this tournament um long island lutheran high school a lot of different teams that was in this tournament camden high school was not in this tournament so you have a, a team in 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 in, in, in montverde who's now three time back to back to back national champion and played multiple times with espn Jelani Cambridge was the best player, is the best player on their basketball team. And she, I, I'm supposing, I'm, I'm, I'm just supposing, I'm just, just guessing that, that that lifted her to number two. Okay. So if my question, my question is, if Jelani Cambridge wouldn't have played in that tournament, would she have risen from number three to number two? If Joyce Edwards and Camden High School played in that tournament, would they, would she have stayed at number two or possibly go number one? Grace Christian played in that tournament, lost in the first round, played great because they're playing against teams that are uh, uh, stacked with D1 talent, you know, private schools and IMG Academy and all these different things, and they, they made a, a great showing of themselves. But it just makes me think. It makes me think. Anybody with a set of eyes knows that Joyce Edwards, if not the number one player in the country, is the number two player in the country. She's been that way all year, all year long. Again, Cambridge is a really, really good basketball player. Really. And she's going to make Ohio State really happy. But, bruh, come on, man. I don't know good and damn well that Joyce Edwards is number one or number two in this country. Let's say 1A and 1B. Sarah Strong and Joyce Edwards are neck and neck. Come on. Come on. That, that's not, that's just not me just um, having a fascination with Joyce Edwards and, 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 and with her being a game cop. I ain't nothing to do with that. Ain't nothing to do with that. She's a great player. She's a great player. They should be winning all these player of the year uh, awards nationally. And not saying that, 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 you know, Cambridge ain't, you know what I mean? It, it, I just don't understand how you precipitously drop, precipitously, precipitously? I'm not sure how you say the word, but I don't say how you drop when you ain't did nothing to drop. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh oh. Manny B. Daniel dropped from 12 to 14. Okay, so Manny B. Daniel, sensational player, point guard extraordinaire. My opinion, the second best point guard in the country behind Jelani Cambridge. Okay, Manny B. Daniel, ESPN. This will irritates me too. Okay, if anybody stood beside Manny B. Daniel, first off, they'll know that Manny is not five foot nine. I'm just saying she's not five foot nine. All right, let's, let's just start with heights. Let's start with heights. I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm happy that uh, Joyce finally has been uh, 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 risen to six foot three because anybody who stood beside her would know that she's six foot three. But, you know, here, no there, right? Okay. Maddie, you know, tore a meniscus, going to be out for a minute. So, so the justification for Maddie dropping to 14, I am assuming, is because she hasn't played since what? January or something? I can't recall when she hurt her, uh, her, her knee. I can't recall. February, one of those months. It was during the playoffs. Okay. So they were just going through the list, you know, Sarah number one. Okay. Jelani number two. Joyce three. Silas Wards four. Uh, Koval, Katarina Koval is number five. Kennedy Smith six. Uh, Alex Zebel seventh, Michaela Blake's eight, Joy Lee ninth, and Toby Foreigner is 10th. And to break it down even more, Sarah Strong going to Yukon, Jelani going to Ohio State, Joyce going to South Carolina, Silas Swartz going to Michigan, K uh, Koval is going to Notre Dame, Kennedy Smith going to Southern Cal, Alex Zebel is Yukon, Michaela Blake's going to Vanderbilt, Jordan Lee going to Texas, uh, Toby Foreigner going to Duke. 
Now, if again, if you watch the, the, the Chipotle Nationals, you saw that Long Island Lutheran had two players who played, I think, yeah, two players, well, actually three, who's going to be really good players because I'm talking about, you know, Salas Wars and, and Koval. Both of them are exceptional players. And they got them as fourth and fifth in the, in the country. And, and I think there's another Koval who's going to be really good. Kenny Smith, number six, who I really did want to come to South Carolina, but she committed to the other USC. Uh, Jordan Lee, who I wanted to be South Carolina as well. She committed to Texas. But where is Justice Carlton? Oh, she's 12. Okay. So initially, if I, if I, if I remember correctly, Justice Carlton and Jordan Lee was six and seven, seven to eight, something like back to back. So, so it was, it was, it was uh, some, a few things changed. A few things changed. Silas Swords is a really good basketball player. She's a really good basketball player. She's going to make Michigan so happy. Silas Swords is at the Unarmor Elite during the summer. You know, really good basketball player. Is she warranted to be the fourth best player in the country? I just want I just want to know. In my opinion, no. She's a great, great uh talent. I mean, you, you, we will see her in the in the Big Ten. We'll see her, or you know, big. I mean, Big Ten got like 17,000 schools right now, but we'll see her. We'll see her. Top four? Hmm. I don't know. Kennedy Smith going to Southern Cal. You know, six rank player in the country. Another exceptional talent. Is she ranked? Is she? Is she? You know, like. Six should should be six rank. It's a lot of different ifs and maybes and what's and all these different things. I really like Jordan Lee. I really like Jordan Lee. I think that Texas has 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 really did so well getting Jordan Lee and Justice Carlton. They are going to be great for Texas. They are, and currently they were ninth and twelfth, so they dropped a, a few spots. Maddie dropped down to 14, and I, I, I wish, I think Silas Swartz was around 9th or 10th before this new thing came out, and she got bumped up. I like Michaela Blakes, Vanderbilt. I do. I like her. She's a, a, a good player. All these players are good, right? But I just can't justify I can't justify why a, Mad uh, a Maddie McDaniel drops to 14 from 12. I just can't. And only thing, again, the only thing I can talk about or think about is the injury. That's the only thing I can justify. Amari Berry, Berry dropped down to 16. Amari Berry is not the 16th ranked uh, uh, player in this country. She's not. Amari Berry is top 10 in this country. She is that elite. Is it because she signed with Clemson? And it's like, nah, uh, when they did the coaching change. And we're going to drop her down. Is that the reason? Hmm. Ariana Robertson. Ariana Robertson signed with Duke. And Duke got, what, a uh, uh, foreigner. They got um, Ariana Robertson. Ariana Robertson, I saw her. She was at Unarmed Elite 24 this summer, too. Six foot four. Legit six foot four. No lies. No lies. No lies whatsoever. But 17, that's a little high for me. Oh, I was wrong. You know what? It wasn't Silas Wars. It was Olivia Olsen who I saw. I was wrong. I was. I was. So correct me if you haven't already. Um, this list is crazy, man. Samara Jones, that girl straight up. Samara Jones is nice, y'all. Y'all going to love her. Gamecock fans, everybody, basketball fans in general going to love Samara Jones. Got the little spec, uh, uh, spectacles going on. Quick point guard, ain't scared of nobody. Y'all gonna love her. McKinley, uh, McKinley Randolph dropped, is she 23rd now? Come on, bro. Adele Tack. Adele Tack, six foot five, six foot six center, committed to South Carolina, January. Nah, I shouldn't say committed. Signed, uh, uh, enrolled. Enrolled at South Carolina in January after, um, you know, coming into the game class in the fall and 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 and, 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 and tore up a knee, kneecap, 
getting work done, got the surgery done. It's going to be a really good player for South Carolina. My opinion is that she's going to be a great player for South Carolina. That's my opinion. She dropped to 28. At one point in time, Adele Tack was 12th in the country. Not this year. But at one point in time, Adele Tack was 12th in the country, got hurt, dropped to 33, then went to 26, now 28. I want to say, I, I, a part of me just want to say, like, okay. A part of me want to say that you just can't. I don't want to say the South Carolina is being screwed over. I, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. Y'all can make y'all speculations as you want to, but I just don't want to say that we are, that the machine of South Carolina is being driven backwards. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. It's April 11th. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. I will say that it was some, it just, it's just strange. Just strange a little bit. Because my head, my heart, my mind, my eyes, I thought that ESPNW is going to increase Joyce to number one. I've been talking about Joyce Edwards being number one in the country for uh, since August. Since August. Not since uh, 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 February. Not since January. Not, no, no, since August. Since August. That's what I thought. But not only did she not increase, she dropped. I'm like, Whoa, what the hell? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Let's go through a few of these comments. We got a lot of chat while I show up midday. Midday on a, what's today? Thursday? Midday on a Thursday. Midday on a Thursday. Typing up. And y'all know good and damn well that y'all need to be at work. Working. Making that money. Don't get fired trying to check out Captain Will. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> she is B. Wayne. What is up? She is B. Wayne. They dropped George. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just, I'm bugging on that. I'm bugging. Cativius TV. I like that name. I like the name. Cativius TV. They're already getting that game cop media treatment. It's sad. I'm, 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 it's bugging. It's bugging. It's, it's like, oh gosh. Cativius TV. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that today. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. Tavares Short, preach to him. Cuzzo, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? She is Brent Ryan. Ain't it crazy? A whole MVP with more points than, than Strong dropped in the rankings. I was, I, I don't know how you become multiple player of the year, national player of the year, and drop in the rankings. I just don't. And you're right. She was giving that work in McDonald's All-American game. She was. She was. <laughs> she is B. Wayne. <laughs> Jelani ain't even better than Malaysia from what I saw in that McDonald's All-American game. If you want, and it's, it's tough. It's tough to compare years, you know, class 2024, class 23, you know, things of that nature. It's difficult at times to compare those. And, and, and anybody with eyes would say that Joy, uh, um, Malaysia was ranked lower than what she should have been. We know that. We know that. I had as a 13th ranked player in the country in the class of 2023. And we know that uh, full Wally Shaman, tough eye. We know that. She knew that. The, uh, Columbia knew that. Everybody knew that. And she went out and proved that notion, you know. Now, in terms of comparing Jelani to uh, Lay, uh, Jelani is a blur in terms of her speed on the court. She is a blur. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but she is a blur on the court and she runs a straight up crazy up tempo game. She pass, uh, she's quick, she's a good defender, she can shoot it. She's a really good, really good player. And, and, and again, she's gonna make Ohio State really happy. It's gonna happen. Lay, I mean, I can't even say more than what, what, what Don Staley said. I said she's a generational talent, you know, and, and and don't get it twisted. South Carolina was recruiting Jelana Cambridge earlier in the process. That that was a thing. You you throw your net out at multiple players and see which one bite and which one fits South Carolina. Well, Maddie McDaniel fits South Carolina, and she's going to be an exceptional player for Carolina. Jelani going to be a great player for Ohio State. 
Jelani and and and, and 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 Full Wiley are different players doing different things. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Buffy Beasley. Buffy Beasley. I love it when they doubt us. Flies under the radar all you want. Ring them whenever they get done talking. <laughs> oh, my God. I love the name first off. Buffy Beasley. And you, you, you're right. You're right. They do. It's so difficult or, 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 or weird how you can um, doubt South Carolina. It's, it's really weird how that's possible. And, it's, and I'm so curious of how they are going to, and I'm talking, when I say they, I'm talking about the national media and I'm talking about, you know, the uh, ABCs and ESPNs and Fox and all these different outlets that air uh, women's basketball. Is it going to be a push, a huge push promoting South Carolina in this win streak that Carolina has going on? Is it going to be a push um, uh, with the notion that Carolina's lost uh, a few games, three games over the past three years. Is it going to be a a, 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 a mold formed around Carolina talking about how great of this basketball, a uh, greater team, this team, great of a team, this basketball team is. And with the notion of talking about a dynasty on the rise. Is that going to be the narrative? Or is the narrative going to return to since um, Caitlin Clark, you know, be uh, is gone, and, and 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 now the focus is going to be on a Paige Beckers, and that question was asked to Paige Beckers, you know, during the tournament, and and basically the question, and I'm I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing, but the question basically means like with Clark leaving, are you um you ready to be the the uh the centerpiece for uh, women's college basketball. Are you ready to be the focus? Are you ready to be the one? That, that's pretty much paraphrasing. And in paraphrasing again, uh, Paige Beckers basically said that the, the needs to be the love needs to be spread around. We have a lot of great basketball players. We have a lot of great women playing basketball that needs that love too, not just an individual player. And I, I love me some Paige Beckers. I ain't gonna front. I love me some Paige Beckers. I like the way her personality is. I like the way uh, she is in front of the camera. I love her basketball game. I love her giving credit to everyone. I like that she actually plays defense. She's one of the better defenders in the country. I like that she can score the basketball. She's efficient. And I said uh, months ago, a couple months ago, I said that Paige Beckers was the best player in the country. That's what I said. She had the best year. But Paige giving or showing love, saying that love should be spread out across the, the basketball universe is what you should say. You should say it. We have great basketball players all across the country. Parity is happening in college basketball. And it's great to see. You look at his list. You you, you talk about UConn's. It was a time, especially when I was in you know, high school and, and and growing up and stuff. It was either UConn, Tennessee. You went to those schools. It wasn't no, you know, I'm going to Ohio State. You know, South Carolina, South Carolina, I'm one like that. Michigan, you know, Notre Dame was good for for quite a while. You know, it just it's, it's spread out, and I love seeing that Vanderbilts and and Dukes and UCLA's and North Carolina State's, Louisville. There's a lot of great players are going to multiple schools. Versus all the great players going to the same basketball schools. You even got Rutgers, Rutgers, Georgia Tech, Florida, a lot of great schools, or potentially uh, uh, schools that's going to increase their value, going to increase their their uh, namesake because um, great players going to those schools. So you can't help but love it. Yeah, but love it. But I'm curious how that big. Uh, a machine, marketing machine is going to promote South Carolina. Are we ever going to see a commercial? I ain't talking about no local commercial. I ain't talking about commercials in Columbia. I ain't talking about billboards in just Columbia, South Carolina. That is great. That is great. Our girls are being recognized and getting that love by our city and by our state. I love that. But are we going to finally see some commercials, some national commercials from our girls? Undefeated champions? 
Are we going to see that? Are we going to see Raven Johnson get her love? Tina Papa get her love? We're going to see Full Wally get her love? I know you're being love me some love some Full Wally. But is she really going to get that love? Like some of these others? I'm watching a TV show. I'm watching, I'm watching a uh uh FBI, you know, and if y'all not watching FBI, FBI on Tuesday night, FBI, FBI most one, FBI international, y'all missing something. But I'm watching those shows, or I might watch a a a, a, a Jersey Shore, still rocking with that, and you might see a commercial from some of the the ladies in college basketball. So so we have to. In order to continue to grow, and I saw what yesterday, you know, WNBA is showing it's going to be broadcasting 35 of, of, of 39 uh, games that the Indiana Fever are, are showing on, on their platforms and Amazon Prime and all these. 35 of 39. 35 of 39. The game that's going to be at the eight, the, the Las Vegas Aces have moved arenas so they can make more room or 8,000, 9,000 more people in that arena for the Aces versus the Indiana Fever. Clock ain't even been drafted yet, but they already they already ready, right? And I don't see. I I actually love it. I love it because the more eyes, because Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark is bringing casual basketball fans to a sport that needs more viewers we saw how we beat you know women's basketball beat men's basketball we saw how we did that by close to four million viewers that's wonderful because you buy a ticket you buy a ticket to the picture show to see caitlin clark and then you see a uh, raven johnson you see uh 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 uh, uh page beckers you see great players playing against so the same thing gonna happen in the wba you are buying a ticket to see caitlin clark that's what they're gonna do but you by, by way of that you're gonna see our own Aaliyah Boston doing work. You know, so I, 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 if you want to see the growth of a sport, you kind of pick and choose individual, you individualize some things, but you still got to promote a team concept because at the end of the day, at the end of the season, you are giving a team trophy to the best team that's out there. College, WNBA, whichever it is. The Las Vegas Aces is the best basketball team in the world led by our own A.J. Wilson, who is the best individual player on in the world, okay? So it's cool to do it that way. And I want the doldrums of the WNBA viewers to increase. I'm going to be talking about WNBA a lot during the offseason. Just, you know, the, the, the app, the WNBA app. Y'all need to go subscribe to that thing because for the first year, the first year is $14.99. For the whole season of the WNBA. And then next season, it's $34.99. For the whole season. You mean you telling me that we can see all our GameCop girls playing in the W, continuing that thing for $14? Are you serious? It should be a crime if you're not doing that. If you want to continue this love for our game cops, you want to follow Camila Cardoza, go on over to these lead pads, download the app. As soon as you open the app, you're talking about you seeing Asia Wilson. That's the first uh, visual that you see. Asia Wilson, our own Asia Wilson, got the, 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 the statue in front of Colonial Life Arena. $14.99, y'all. That's crazy. Asia, Zaya, Alicia B here. Come on, Aaliyah. We going on Camila, Kimmy Mitchell, Bree. I mean, so many different players, Gamecock players, plays in the W. If you're just going to sit there and, and, and say, I'm, 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 like I did, like I did, I looked at the schedule. I'm like, okay, Gamecock play here, Gamecock play here. I'm, play, I'm, 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 I'm circling around right here and put a star and put a, a, a gold circle and a, 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 and, a, and a, what's the thing called? A smiley face around the thing because I want to see our girls play. We have to continue to do that. Camila Cardoza, who we know, who we love, who we who we cherish for those three years at South Carolina, will most likely be chosen by the Los Angeles Sparks. She will be playing with Zaya Cook. Help me now. We have to see that. We have to support that. 
fourteen ninety nine. Hmm. Unreal. Just give it for free. This whole thing I was I was talking yesterday. I was talking to my wife who was at dinner, and I was like, okay, we're like this. The WNBA reminds me of of um the NBA. During the 70s. Remind me of the NBA during the 70s. They were doing that the ABA, then the NBA, and the NBA uh, was what, trust and believe when I say this, the NBA wasn't making the millions upon millions of dollars that the NBA makes now, okay? In the 70s, you know, the, the, the championships were on tape delay. They weren't even live. They were not even live. The players weren't making that money. Some of these players had second jobs. Sounds real familiar now, huh? This ain't new. This is not new to what the WNBA is going through. NBA, they almost went out of business, y'all. Then what happened? What happened was Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michigan State, Indiana State, playing in the college Final Four, playing each other in the, in the, in the championship, started that rivalry. Well, that rivalry, rivalry continued on into the NBA. And that real talk, no joke, real seriousness, that's what saved the NBA. That rivalry between Magic and Larry Bird. One in Boston, one in LA. But you continue that rivalry, you continue what was built in college and goes on to the next league. And then, of course, in the 80s, you know, revenue started increasing, uh, player salary started increasing, guaranteed money started happening. But this just not happen overnight, y'all. I think we're on the precipice of women's sports in basketball, WNBA, on the precipice of doing something similar to that degree. We have to start somewhere. But the rivalries, and I love how our girls play three, four, five years in the uh, college basketball, and you take those rivalries, you take those things, and you move on, you move on into the W. Who, if, if you know, Raven Johnson's going to be a, a red shirt junior this upcoming season. Who don't want to see some of these rivalries, Raven going to the, to the W, going against Caitlin Clark? Who don't want to see that? Who about to take for that? Who don't want to see Angel Reese uh, in the W playing against Caitlin Clark? Who don't want to see that? Because those things, because we saw those girls play for four years. Who don't want to see that? Who don't want to see Caitlin Clark? I'm excuse me, uh, Camila Cardoza playing against Angel Reese. We want to see all those things because we know those players. The problem that's going on with uh, um, college basketball in general, it ain't women's basketball. We ain't proud of women's basketball. Women's basketball on fire. Women's basketball is doing what the hell they want to do. Women's basketball is taking over the sport of basketball. And they're doing, doing this whole revenue thing that, you know, we got to get pieces of the pie and get this part of the revenue and all this. That's definitely going to be worked out because they see what it is. If you're drawing, if you're drawing 4 million more viewers than men's basketball, oh, we're in a spot, not him. We're in a spot. We're in a situation where we got to have a conversation that uh, we got to do some changes. On these commercials, we gotta do some changes on some of these deals. We gotta make some differences now. And the problem with men's basketball, and it's not a men's basketball show, because I don't even watch it like that no more. I watch women's basketball. That's why I'm talking about it right now. But the problem that men's basketball is gonna have going forward, we ain't got no stars. We ain't got no stars, no basketball. Because the, 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 the before they become stars, they go on to the NBA. So ain't no storylines. It ain't no rivalries being made up. It's things that's going down. What you have is, and then you have the players who've been there for three, four years, and the real talk, the real talk, if you look at the players who've been there for three, four years, the reason they're still in college for three, four years is because they're not good enough, according to the teams in the NBA, to be drafted. That's the real. That's the real. But it's not in, 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 in girls' basketball. It's not in women's basketball. In women's basketball, you stay in four years. And when you get to the W, you are a, a chiseled uh, 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 monument of a basketball player who's been groomed, who's been coached, who's been taught basketball. And you're a grown woman. You got babies going out there in the, in the men's basketball time they want to be an uh, NBA player. You heard what uh, Donna Tarasi was talking about, how she talked about rookies? You got grown women. Grown women. Who, who 
Dr. Taurasi want to torture uh, rookies. Give him that work. And I love it. I ain't going to front. I love it. I love I, I love me some Dr. Taurasi. She said, she said whatever the hell she want to say. And I love that about her. I, I really do. But you, it, that is the problem right now in men's college basketball. There ain't no storylines. Even though you want to create one, there ain't no storyline because it's not there. The coaches are more famous than the players in men's college basketball. That's a problem. In, 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 in women's basketball, we have a situation where the growth and the, 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 the maturity of these girls are continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We knew about the talent in this basketball team. Now the country knows about the talent in this basketball team. We knew how good uh, Raven Johnson was and is. We knew that. We knew how good uh, uh, Tahina Pow Pow was and is. But when you sit there and you are a, a casual fan, because this is the thing, you're a casual fan, and he's like, okay, okay. I'm like, okay, I tune, I'm tuning in right now. I'm tuning in because I want to see me some Kate LaClaw. Oh, yeah, I want to see me some Kate LaClaw. Oh, damn, who the hell is that? Who the fuck? Oh, 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 Sue, Sue, Leroy. Who the hell is that right there? Who the hell Who the hell is that? What the That girl right there, really good. Like, damn, that girl told me. That's what they, that's what the casual fans do. That's what they do. Then you you a game cop, you're like, okay, we got y'all now. We got y'all now. We got a we got a we got a whole host of folks who don't know about old South Clay. We got a whole bunch of folks who don't know about Colonial Life Arena. We got a whole bunch of folks who don't know about the country of 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 of, the, of South Clay, the 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 sweet tea, the, the pig feet eating. They don't know about South Carolina. Initially. But then 18.9 million fans, 18.7 million, whoever you want to talk to, saw the greatness of Carolina. But not by choice. Opportunity is going to continue to come for South Carolina. I just want our girls to be recognized for those reasons. It'll be recognized. Come with it three times, three times, three times, national champions. And, and, you know, this whole, you know, our girls dropping now, you know, our recruits dropping. Y'all know that Joyce Edwards going to give work, work this season and for the next four years at South Carolina. Y'all know that. She's going to give them work. Y'all know that Maddie McDaniel, if you don't know Madison McDaniel from Maryland, and you got to say it like that, Maryland, because that's how they talk about it. Maryland is going to give them that work. She's going to be a great player. She is going to be a sensational player. Adele Tack got a championship ring this season. Adele Tack is nursing a injury. Adele Tack will be better, stronger for it. She's one, from what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, and I'm trying to get Adele to come on the show again, possibly in the next couple of weeks. But what I'm hearing, what I'm understanding, the healing process is going great. She's one of the smartest members on the South Carolina basketball team. We got a good one in the Dell Tack, y'all. Dell Tack from Texas with the Grand Prairie. Six foot five, six foot six. We got a good one. Regardless of what the, you know, these, these rankings, because at the end of the day, I don't give a damn. I don't have to be real with you. I don't care. I don't care. Because what I see in my eyes, what I see when I go to a, a recruiting uh, situation, when I see uh, uh, an exposure camp, what I see is elite basketball talent, regardless of other folks say so. You know? That's what I see. And we're going to be diving deep into the 20 class of 2025 this season. You know? Because that's what we're going to be. We got to look at the next babies. We got to look at the next ones. We're going to be the one. So we keep this train going. Okay, but Maddie, Adele, Joyce, can't wait for them to arrive on campus. And Adele's already there. Can't wait for that to arrive. Who going to the um the parade? Who going to the parade on Sunday? That's gonna be amazing. Parade gonna be amazing. Celebrating these girls and, and, and just undefeated season. So just take over Columbia. Take over Columbia. Just so special. Just so special to see. So awesome. 
some comments about uh more comments about the 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 the, the, the rankings and stuff um edward m williams made a comment says joyce actually i play sarah i just don't think sarah's not a banger but a finesse player you can see a situation and you know you got to be a really really good basketball team this season it they i mean when those when those now they had some they they have had some transfer portal entries they have had some um you know some folks who graduate and, and move on to the next level but the situation for a sour strong to come either come in and start or get some serious minutes on UConn is 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 high. Asia Fudd is gonna be back. Paige Becker is gonna be back. Ali uh Zabil, hope I'm saying that name right, is an outstanding player. She can shoot that three. She's quick. She seems like to be to be the typical UConn player. And Sarah Strong can shoot the lights out. She can shoot, she can legitimately shoot the lights out. Is she a forward, a power forward? No, Sarah ain't no, ain't no power forward. She played power forward in, college, in high school because she's the biggest one on the court. So she's going to do that. But she's not going to play no power forward in no, in no uh, UConn. She's going to be playing the three. She's going to be playing the three. That's what she's going to be playing. It's, it's two separate players when we talk about Sarah and we talk about Joyce. It's two separate players. Two separate players, two separate positions and, and, and what they're going to do in college. Joyce is six foot three. Sarah is six foot two. Joyce is ultra athletic. And I said that, you know, and this going in, 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 in the verge of, you know, she was all state in three sports. This now is a specialized situation uh, most of the times in, 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 in lady sports now. You play one sport, you're going to play that sport, and you're going to play AAU, and you're going to have the offseason coaching, and you're going to do all this, and then you play the, the season and all this stuff. So with Joyce being great at soccer, being great at volleyball, being spectacular at basketball, and while also, you know, going to be graduating with an over 5.0 GPA, the girl is straight up a genius. I'm just telling you like that. The girl probably going to be an astronaut. I don't know what the girl going to be. Probably the president of the United States. 20 years from now, we're going to talk about Joyce Edwards running for Congress. I don't know what's going to go down. But I have my, my when I'm sitting in my rocking chair watching some some sports and watching some YouTube highlights of me bloviating, talking about and drinking out my, my um solo cup. All those different things. I mean, talking about some Joyce Edwards and going to get my vote. You know what I'm saying? I just feel that way about Joyce Edwards. The girl going to be a genius. Okay. But she is ultra athletic. She can, because I see some stuff. So, oh, Joyce can't shoot the ball. She ain't no Sarah Strong. But here's the thing. There ain't nobody in this top 100 class and she can shoot the ball like Sarah Strong. Sarah Strong is the best shooter in this class. She is the best shooter. Much like, much like some girl on our team who does a little little, little 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 thing on on Instagram and on Twitter? And I see it on Twitter called T Town Tessa. Tessa Tessa was the best shooter in the class of 2023. Look it up. She was the best shooter in the class of 2023. Tessa T Town Tessa Johnson. Oh, Sarah Strong can shoot better than anybody. Joyce Edwards ain't got to shoot three pointers. Matter of fact, I don't vote Joyce Edwards shooting no three pointers with South Carolina. Oh, damn. What I want for Joyce Edwards is to rebound the basketball, block shots, run that court, be that person, because she can handle the ball. Don't forget, Joyce Edwards can handle the ball. She can handle the ball. She can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and do that. It's not a shooting contest. We ain't playing horse. Now, for South Carolina, we got shooters. Y'all ever heard of Tina Papa? You heard of her? Papa, Latina Liza, Papa, Oceanside herself. Y'all heard about her, right? Y'all heard about Tessa Johnson? Oh, you, if you didn't know about Tessa Johnson, everybody know about her right now. We got shooters. Tina Papa shot 47% for three. Tessa shot 44% for three. Hell, Raven Johnson shot 35% for three herself. We got shooters. Yeah, don't worry about that. I want Joyce to come in. Play hella fire defense, using the athleticism, rebounding, blocking shots, doing what she do. But she's a great basketball player, y'all. So the comparison, and I see in the comments, I ain't gonna read all of them. But I see in the comparison, I'm about Sarah Strong's a much better shooter than Joyce Evans. Yeah, she is. She is. 
But if anything that y'all learned from Captain Will during season one of Game Got Talk with Captain Will, because right now we're in season two, in front of three times, three times, three times national champions, is that there's a whole lot more than shooting the basketball that goes on with winning championships. A whole lot more that goes on with that, right? Okay. Offense sell tickets, defense uh, wins games, rebound and win championships. Well, George L was checked a couple of those boxes right there, just showing up at the build, y'all. Okay, so pump your brakes, pump your brakes now. A lot of comments. And for you 589 people watching right now, if you have not subscribed to Game Talk with Cam Will, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can continue to rock with me. Regardless if it's 8 o'clock at night when we're normally doing the thing or if it's 1 something in the afternoon when I see some crazy stuff on the on the uh, Twitter or the Instagram, like I just got to talk about. I just got to talk about it. I might come on it later. I don't know. If I see some craziness going on again, I'm going to talk about it again. That's how I do. Because I want y'all to be to feel what I'm feeling. I just want well, y'all my family. Y'all my family. Y'all invited to the cookout. Y'all, 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 when you invited to the cookout, make sure you have your aluminum foil. Have your aluminum foil so you can take something back home with you. So when you have something to take home with you, and that's what I try to do. I try to be a teacher. I try to let you know. I try to have feelings and all those good things. So if something bothers me about what I'm seeing in sports, particular uh, women's sports, and, and even more specifically about Gamecocks women's sports, we can have a conversation about it. Conversation. Conversation. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, John Carter, you are so funny. I try. Well, actually, I don't try. It's just me. This is, this is real. Could you believe? This is the thing, right? I was an introvert when I was growing up. I was. I was an introvert. I was shy. Who wanted to do that? I was shy. <laughs> that stole went away. <laughs> Mm-hmm. JB, what's up? What's up, bro? You can't be doing lives during the work hours every day. I just happened to open you to the pleasant surprise. I guess I'm gonna break down. <laughs> JB, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, JB, you know how I roll. You know how I roll. If I see something, I can't just wait till eight o'clock. You got a whole lot of hours because that's up. Be bubbling in me. Be bubbling. So I gotta let it go. I just gotta let it go. <laughs> I gotta let it go. <laughs> Oh, God. Sport geek, bro. I don't, I don't, oh, girl, I shouldn't say, bro. Fam, I don't know. I can't remember if you 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 chimed in before, but I see a lot of your comments now. So just like like what's up? Hey, appreciate you for being here. You know, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have not already out. Sarah Strong be the number one pick. Easily, easily can shoot. Easily, she can shoot. Okay, let me read it right. Sarah Strong will be the number one pick. Easily, she can shoot. Joyce can't. Not sure. So we already fast. I'm, I'm assuming we fast forward in four years to see what happens. That's my assumption. We talking about the WNBA, and you're saying that you put you obviously you putting a big emphasis on shooting. I got it. Cheers. I understand. I understand. Cheers, Rewayne. Boston didn't have a three either. Neither did Asia. That is so true in so many ways that neither one of is more. I just gotta say. I just I just gotta say. With all, uh, I have to say that um, that you, you folks do realize that there's more to basketball than sh- just shooting the three pointer. I I, I I I feel like I have to say that. I just had to remind folks from time to time that um, there's other aspects of basketball. There's other, there's other aspects of basketball. Now you have teams that rely on a three pointer. You have a lot of teams that rely on the three-pointer. We're going to shoot the basketball behind the three-point line 25, 30 times, 35 times a game. Okay. You have teams that, hell, we just played a team, and I would have shot the ball um, 45, 47% of the attempts were three-point baskets. And, and, and I know that in this day and age, especially with the NBA and the, the affection of the three-point shot, I understand. And, and, you know, some of those teams in women's basketball try to do the same thing and men's basketball try to do the same thing. But South Carolina is not a top of team. We're not going to shoot the ball 30 times from three point line, even though if we chose to do so, we could do it very well. South Carolina was number three in, in, in the country in terms of treating the three. But that's not the way we play. So you have teams that shoot that way, shoot an abundance of three pointers, but don't can't even guard me, my 48 year old self. 
out on the court. So there's levels to it. There's levels. And South Carolina's on a different level than anybody else. You can win basketball games. You can win championships without shooting 33 pointers a game. We, we get that, right? Because in the day, eventually you got to guard somebody. You do. And you shooting, if you are shooting 40% of your shots, but you're only making about 33, 34% of your three-point baskets, you are leaving a lot of opportunities for one of the best rebounding teams in the country to grab rebounds, go another end. Uh, Raven Johnson do that, whoop. Malaysia Fulwiler do that, whoop. Or Tina Bob, I'll kick it out of her and hit that thing right now. Or Tessie doing that thing right now. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. But don't don't just re, don't just be uh rely on the three-point basket. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Lots of great comments. Lots of great comments. I love, I love the love. I love the love. It's so so awesome. I'm trying to control my computer. It's tripping, tripping. Love the love. B. Harris, thank you so much for the tip. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you're the best. That's all I can say. If we play UConn, who guards Ashlyn, Fagan, or Tat? I'm just saying, keep up the good work. Appreciate you. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for rocking with me. If we play UConn, who guards Ashlyn, Fagan, or Tat? Bro, I, I have no idea. I have no idea who who, who UConn is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know defensively because we have a problem. But you're still gonna be. We're still gonna be big. We're still gonna be more athletic. Ashton Watkins is the most athletic player in the country. She is, and she's six foot three. What if she continue to grow? What what what? We would wake up and say, "Oh, Ashton Watkins six foot four. What would happen? What if she wears some lips and it says she's six foot four? You know what I'm saying? But but you kind of have a, a big or a, a couple of bigs who can guard uh, our bigs. They don't. And you could throw in, you know, they don't have a six foot five player who can guard. So that that's the thing. UConn gonna be good. They're gonna be really good offensively. And, and UConn's team traditionally plays defense, you know, well. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't know. Because we're gonna be a problem inside once again. We're gonna be. A, Real talk, we're going to be a problem inside for the duration of however long Don Staley chooses to be a coach at the University of South Carolina. Then that's the way she recruits. She she recruits from the inside out, and we always going to be dominant inside. Always. I will never, ever, ever, ever doubt Don Staley in, in, in terms of recruiting. Ever. Ever. And we, we will find either a dominant, size-worthy, big, in the recruiting base, and there's a um, y'all need to look out. It's a six foot five, I think she's a sophomore from West Side, South Carolina. Let me see, I think she's a sophomore, might be it. Let me see, class of 2026. Da, da, da. The 26 or 25. I don't see it. But this is, she's a center from South Carolina. And she is really, really good. It might be 27. Let me check that. 27. Dun, 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 dun. Wait for it. Yeah. Kaylee Hartwell, six foot five post player from Westside High School. Now, you talking about class of 2027. Right now we're working on class of 2025. So it just it just makes sense, right? It makes sense on in, 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 in the big scheme of things when we're talking about you know future bigs and the way that Don Staley recruits. So Adele Tat, freshman season, year 2024. Play a couple of years, and, and you can bet that this Kaylee 
Kalia Hartwell, six foot five from Westside High School, right now ranked and is early. It's early, obviously, but she's a top ten ranked recruit in the class twenty twenty seven. It's gonna be a game, Kyle. You can. You, what? There's no way the hell Don Sanders gonna let her leave South Carolina. Mm-mm, we don't do that. We don't do that. And she fits the mold of what Carolina gets. You know, it just those are just the mold. So you just continue to roll those out. You continue to roll six foot five, six foot six players. This is why I you know I didn't know because I get a lot of DMs and, and stuff going on in, in terms of the transfer portal and, and, and like it's popping and it's, it's jumping and doing all these different things. The transfer portal is hot, but the question that I have for folks who are talking about the transfer portal is: Are they going to actually? If, if a game, it, how can I say? Tahina Pow Pow came to South Carolina to fill a a need that we had. She was an all Pac-12 player at Oregon, came to South Carolina, for the most part, led the country in three-point baskets. She filled that need. What need does South Carolina has right now? A lot of folks are going to say, oh, Camila Cardoza left. Okay. But, which is true, and Camila Cardoza is going to be either number two or number four, possibly number three pick in the in, in the um, WNBA draft. But you have Sonia Fagan, you have Ashton Watkins, you have Adele Tack, who's coming, who's going to be here. You have Joyce Edwards going to be here. We have a plethora of bigs. Okay. You could throw in, you know, uh, Chloe Kitt, six foot two. Schema Walker, we don't know what she's going to do, but we have a plethora. So if you are going to be a big coming to the University of South Carolina, number one, that big has to be better, in my humble opinion, than the players that we have right now. And I don't see players in the transfer portal who are better than Ashlyn Watkins. I don't see players in the transfer portal who are better than Sanaya Fagan. And don't, don't, you can miss me with the stats because, because you're going to have a lot of players in the transfer portal who uh, were great or show great stats on inferior teams. Okay. Miss me with that. But I don't see anyone. I don't. I don't see. Them. So it, it, are they going to be a top level big? Going to be just drop into the, uh, the transfer portal and say, yo, I'm going to South Carolina. I'm going to start over these girls. No. That ain't happening. Our girls are dominant. At the high school level, the international level, and the college level. Nah, bro. Mm-mm. Not going to happen. I heard some stuff you know, talking about um, Barker, Alabama. Like, Cap, you know, what it was she was coming to South Carolina. I was like, I mean, she'd be cool. She'd be cool for South Carolina, but who's she going to play ahead of? Six-foot guard, play, you know, play okay defense, can shoot the rock for Alabama. You know, is she going to play ahead of uh, Tina Baba? No. Is she going to play ahead of, uh, of uh, Malaysia Fulwiler, Tessa Johnson, Brie Hall? No. No. That just ain't going to happen. So I don't – our guard rotation is set. We got I, – I don't see no – I don't see no transfers. I don't see any. I don't see any. And if, and if, 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 if somebody decides to enter the portal from South Carolina and go to another team – I mean, it happened last year. It could still happen. It could still happen. The possibilities are are, are, are out there. But unless it's a, a player, and I'm talking about a player who plays over 20 minutes, 22, 23 minutes, who, who, into the, uh, on our team that leaves the transfer portal, then we have that conversation about bringing in a high-level player to fill that gap. That ain't happening. Ain't going nowhere. Raven ain't going nowhere. Powell ain't going nowhere. Bree ain't going nowhere. Raven led the team in minutes. Tina Papa was second. Then you got a, a conversation with Camila Cardoza and Bree Hall. Come on now. We set. We good. Y'all, other teams, y'all, you mean, got LSU being thirsty. It's cool. LSU being thirsty, trying to enter the transfer portal uh, again, you know, trying to get these players to come on over to LSU, blah, blah, blah. We'll probably see Deja Kelly over there. That's cool. A lot of uh, I don't know. Deja Kelly might be getting as far away from the SEC as possible. She don't want to see no more no Raven Johnson. No more of that. 
Mm-mm. Other teams, you know, y'all, y'all build your team, build your team through the transfer portal. See what that gets you. Go ahead. While Carolina uses the transfer portal to fill a obvious need to supplement, but uses the draft. I shouldn't you say draft? Use the recruiting is the way to build the team, the culture, the the machine that is known as South Carolina. That is what it is. Good luck. Good luck because you're still going to be dealing with a three-time, three-time, three-time national champion, South Carolina Gamecock women's basketball team. This concludes another episode of Gamecock Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and most important, make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend about Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. Tell an enemy. Tell a, uh, a baby mama. Tell a bill collector. To whoever it is. When somebody calling you about spam, you say you pick up the phone and say, hey, you heard about Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will? That's what you do. Spread the word. Spread the love. Because you are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go. Go Gamecocks.